Hey, so for this video, I want to talk to you about Drew Hayden Taylor's play God and the Indian, which is a really, really interesting um, exploration of the ongoing trauma of the residential schools in Canada. So uh, for those of you who, who, who don't know, um, the residential schools were part of a sort of culture struggle in Canada um, where, and, and in the U.S. as well, um, where First Nations children, Métis children, Indigenous children were taken from their homes, taken from their villages, reservations, wherever it was that they were living, and they were put into uh, schools often run by um, religious groups, uh, the Anglican Church, the Catholic Church, whatever it is. Um, and essentially they were trained not to be indigenous peoples. Um, so they were taught to speak English and they would be, for instance, punished if they, were, if they spoke their own indigenous languages. They were trained to be Christian and to reject uh, any sort of traditional cultural elements from their own peoples, um, and it was a it was a profoundly horrific experience of cultural erasure, um, and 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 beyond that sort of cultural violence, these were also places that were rife with physical abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, and so on and so on. Um, as is, as seems almost inevitable, unfortunately, whenever you have large numbers of uh, children in the care of adults with no sort of oversight or anything like this. Um, but this play, God and the Indian, is about a former residence uh, residential school uh, st student, put student in scare quotes, um, who confronts this man who's now a bishop but was at the time a priest uh, working in this residential school and um, Johnny Indian uh, is, is uh, the character's name. Um, the former student at this residential school, um, we now have um, assistant Bishop George, um, who was at the time Father George. Um, Johnny Indian is living on the street. She is a former alcoholic, former only in the sense that her liver is shot and she can't physically drink alcohol anymore. Um, unemployed, no money, etc, etc. So really just sort of this absolutely sort of worst case scenario outcome of these residential schools and the horrific things that went on there. And she sees George. Uh, he's gone and gotten coffee or something and, and uh, she sees him and she follows him back to his office and she attempts to make him confess that he molested her while she was in this residential school and he stridently refuses to do so and so one of the big sort of tension of the play and i think the really fascinating tension of the play is that johnny's version of events is different from George's version of events, but both the versions are plausible, and the play itself never definitively tells us who's right. So we never definitively learn whether George actually molested Johnny or not. Like it's it's sort of like. Um, John Patrick Shandley's play Doubt, 
which also sort of leaves open this question of whether or not this sexual abuse at the center of uh, the conflict in the play actually occurred. We have the same kind of thing here. Um, the difference being we do know that um, that Johnny did suffer in this residential school. The question really, and, the, and even George, um, even George sort of admits um, that the things that went on in the residential schools were terrible. So, um, he, he admits in a couple of places that uh, he recognized at the time that the things that were going on were terrible. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it right off the top of my head, but like he actually, it turns out after he was at this uh, residential school, he played a big part in getting them shut down and in sort of getting the, the church to issue a formal apology for them. The question is, does that make up for the fact that he was Sorry, that he was there for two years and that he may have sexually abused uh, this woman who at the time was a child. Um, again, we also don't know whether he did that. We have her accusation, we have his denial, and it's an open question at the end of the play, which is a really interesting uh, decision on Taylor's part. But I think it actually makes the play really, really powerful because in some ways it doesn't matter whether George specifically was responsible for sexually assaulting this child. In some ways it does, but in, 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 in other ways it doesn't because it's, it's a larger question about how white Canadians and the Canadian government and the sort of institutions of, of various churches in Canada have in fact treated indigenous peoples in Canada. Like, and that's a, a challenging thing. And, I, it, and it's not a sort of simple race play kind of thing. It's not a sort of simple, I point the finger at you, white Canada, and I say, you are guilty. The quest, it's, it's a play that asks the question, can we hold white Canada guilty regardless of whether or not individuals or regardless of whether or not um, specific institutions had anything to do with uh, particular abuses of indigenous people. And it's it's a play that resists a simple answer, and it's that sort of resisting of a simple answer that I think is so brilliant about it, because it would be, I think, very easy for Taylor to say, yes, white Canada is guilty, uh, white Canadians are guilty, and something must be done to create justice for us. But that's also, in many ways, an overly simplistic answer, and, and Taylor resists that, by not giving us a clear-cut answer on whether or not George is guilty of the thing that Johnny accuses him of.